and happy good morning to you. My name is Kylo. This is how to pair a motor. First thing you want to ask yourself is, am I ready to pair a motor? Am I physically capable? Am I fresh? Am I sober? Am I, have I got all my senses keen? Am I woke up? This is an early morning flight. I've had my coffee. I've not moved around a lot. I like to kind of maybe kick around a little bit, get warmed up. I don't get my gear ready the day before because I like to get it all ready the morning of. That allows me to get the blood flowing. If it's low wind and you got to break into a sprint, maybe you trip and fall because you don't have the blood flowing to your legs yet. I like to get everything set up the morning of, not the day before. Like if I'm putting it in the truck, if I'm moving it around, if I'm filling it up, I'll, I'll do all that stuff the morning of if I'm doing a morning flight. You know, afternoon's not so bad because you're fresh. You've been up through the day, hopefully. Once we've established that we are fresh and okay to fly physiologically, physically, and mentally, then we need to do some weather checks. We need to check surface conditions, terrain, winds aloft, thermal activity. All these things play a part. I've done that check today. We've got light winds on the surface, winds aloft that are relatively strong, but limited gust and limited thermal activity. The sun is just about to rise. Is this good content? I'm on a drug run. I got to return some drugs down to this other pharmacy and I thought it'd be a good time to shoot a vlog along the way. Oh cool, I can use it as a rear view mirror. So I don't want this to be used as an instructional video, but these are some fundamentals, some basics that everybody needs to do if you're going to have a successful paramotor flight. Visual observations, even beyond that, you want to look for precipitation. Anywhere within 100 miles, you may get a gust front. So look for that on the radar. High resolution radar shows them even better. Check your winds aloft. If they're all blowing the same direction and it's not increasing at any sort of alarming amount, then you're probably good. Not experienced in checking those things. Get with somebody who knows how to look at it. Strong winds aloft can cause massive gradients, wind shear, and trouble. So look for that. On this particular day, there was none of those shenanigans. It was just a buttery smooth day. The first thing I like to do when I get to the field is post up a couple of wind socks. I use one right at the spot where I'm parked and I put one out in front. At the very minimum, if you just got one, go put it up wind about two launch distances ahead of you. That way you can see what's coming down the pipe. Very good thing to do. I always do this. And then I just observe. I look around the field, check your surroundings, look at the windsock. Spend a few minutes just focusing on what the air is doing. And in this case, it looks very, very good. Then I'll get the motor. Set the motor up before I do the wing. You wanna make sure the motor's running. Throttle, check your throttle, make sure it moves. Huge safety thing there. Regular old pre-flight, we won't include that. That's part of the curriculum, but do your pre-flight on your machine. Do a warm up on the machine. All this before the wing even comes out of the bag. That way, if you have motor trouble, you don't have to stop and put the wing up. Funky, 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 funky. After you've determined that the motor is in good shape, running and warmed up, then you can grab your wing. Now, how do you take it out of the bag even? These things are important. Risers first, out of the bag. Now, the first grab that you wanna make, look at this. This move is important. Grab your line so that you've got room to make loops. Look at how I'm making the loops and they're nowhere near those risers. The risers are near the ground, they're not on the ground but you can put the whole thing in one hand and you want to treat it as three separate pieces. The wing, the lines, and the risers. When you lay it on the ground, this is also important. Everything is important. Look how close my risers are to the wing. Look at all the slack I have in the lines. This is how you lay your glider on the ground. If you stretch those lines out, you lose. Clear your leading edge. 
leading edge, line overs, this can all be prevented on the ground. Now watch this move. See I'm picking the glider up before I lay it down? Do this instead of dragging it. If you drag it, it wears out faster. You'll cause abrasion on the surface of the wing. So anytime you're moving the wing on the ground, get some air under it, back up, then lay it down. Obviously they're gonna drag around a little bit, but any bit of prevention is gonna be helpful. When you pick your risers up in your hand, grab them by the loops, sort your lines, get everything oriented, a little back and forth seesaw action. Then you wanna look visually, look down the loops, always hold them with the A's on top. The speed system there is a good indicator that the A's are on top. See how this one's twisted on the right? Give it a flip, A's on top again. Conditions call for a forward launch. So my layout is gonna be a forward layout. I'm going to take the loops in my hand and I'm going to walk to the wings. You want to do one big swoop. That prevents compression knots from forming. If you do a whole bunch of swoopy swoopy, you get tangles. Lay them down, A's out. The more closely you get the wing laid out to a perfect shape, the easier air is going to go in those holes. Every single cell opening needs to be stretched out tight. Pull your center back. That way it's the first thing to come up. I'm also aiming it into the wind. Make sure that it's pointed where you want to go. All these things you can do, take your time, and it's going to make the inflation work out a lot better. So good technique with a good layout is almost 100% success. Once you have the wing laid out properly and satisfactory, then it's time to put on the motor. Some people really struggle putting on the paramotor. It's a lot simpler than you think. You ever put on a tuxedo top? You get your arms or your hands in the holes down to your elbows just like this. You don't put it all the way onto one shoulder and then you can slide it on equally on both sides. Obviously I've got my helmet on already. I've done all the other things. These are the order of operations. Your motor's warmed up. You know it works. It's pre-flighted. <laughs> Now when you go over to the wing, you can clip in. Now I like to carry everything over to the wing unclipped. That way I can do it all at once. I'm gonna expose all my buckles, two at the legs, two on each side under the swing arms, and then a chest strap. I get everything pulled out so it's easy to go into the hole. Leg straps are the most important straps on the whole harness. That's what holds you in, it's what keeps you from falling out. Always buckle those first. And then weight shift adjustment strap, then chest strap. At that point, I'm ready to clip in the wing. Risers, how you pick them up, how you turn them, how you clip them in, this is important. Left hand, left beaner, right hand, left riser. That way you don't shuffle your fingers around. Get it in your hand properly. Use your other hand to open the beaner. You can't do this without thinking about it too much. You need to practice it. Then I go through my check. Leg, leg, chest, chest, chin. Beaners, lock, gates in. Trimmers, set, brakes, clear. Now I'm ready to start my engine. You want to get your throttle on your hand before you start your engine. That way you can access the kill switch if necessary. Super important. Again, order of operations. While the motor's warming up, I'm going to acquire my controls. It's very important how you hold the toggle under the throttle. You want to get that toggle in between some finger. That way, if you release the throttle, you do not drop your toggle. If you got all four fingers through the hole and you open your hand to release the throttle, you risk losing your control for the glider. A acquisition from a forward position. From behind, underneath, you will pinch those A's between your thumb and your forefinger just like this. Now watch this, because everybody wants to come right back out and that's wrong. You gotta come up through the middle with everything so that those A's are forward and on top. Also, pull those A risers tight. Notice how there's no slop in between my fingers and the carabiners. Everything is taut. Hold that. Do not pull down where you have slop in the risers. You want everything tight. 
this is how you aim the glider. Notice I'm gonna show you from two perspectives. First, I'm looking off to my left, I'm looking at the line. And once I see the line start to get tight, I stop moving. Very important not to disturb your layout. If I was to keep pulling on these lines, I would flop that glider over and wreck my layout, which would probably wreck my inflation. Learn to do these moves. Practice them till you don't even think about it. Now that I see that everything is tight, risers and lines, I look forward and take aim at which way I'm going. Once you're in this position, if everything looks exactly the way it looks here, you're good to go. I've got tight risers, tight lines, I'm looking ahead, I'm straight into the wind. I'm going to take a couple steps back now. I'm going to lean forward and make sure that my engine can attain full power. Now you don't have to run it for a minute, you don't have to run it for 20 seconds. You want to make sure that it runs, that when you squeeze it, you get the thrust. Now it's go time. I check my surroundings and commit. Perfect inflation, power application, brake check, and go. That's it. You enjoy your flight. You do what you need to do. I flew around for a little while. I'm not going to show you the flight. Then you come back to land. Just a notation about making a good approach. If you make a good approach, you'll make a good landing. Watch my flare. Notice how I don't do the flare until I'm almost on the ground. Flaring too early is the number one cause of having a hard landing. So wait on it. Just wait on the flare and time it correctly. This is a great time to do a play by play. So look at my hands. Let's focus on my hands. They're up. They're all the way up. They're touching the pulleys. They start to move now and they just start to move. Look at the way my descent slows. I'm not going up but it slowed and now I'm level, level, level. Now I'm starting to finish, starting to finish, finishing, finishing as I contact the ground. That's what it is. If you go up, you went too fast. If you crash into the ground, you went too slow. You want to time it perfectly and you do not want to start your flare until you're three to four feet from the ground. That's it. If you do it at that time and wait, it'll be good. Once you land, the first thing you want to do is put your toggles away. Put them on the keepers, magnets, buttons, whatever. Then you can unclip. I've retrained a few students from a few different schools and they were never taught how to set the paramotor down. Reach out, grab the hoop with one arm, take the other arm all the way out so that the motor is hanging on one strap on one shoulder. This allows you to see visually exactly where you set the motor down on the stool so that you don't miss. I like to address my harness. I like to fold it up, put my leg buckles, all my buckles, my throttle. I tuck everything down in the seat. That way it's not dragging on the ground and getting damaged. These Dudek power seats have these nice little rings. I like to use them to hold the harness up off the ground. Let the motor cool off and put it away. A little post-flight check, all good. In this situation, I'm not gonna bag the glider because it's damp, it's wet. I've had it in the dew. I can feel the moisture on me. You never wanna bag a damp glider because it could mildew. So uh, oftentimes when they're wet, instead of bagging them, I'll just throw them in there, let them dry, or I'll kite them after the dew burns off. Maybe go fly them again for a mid-morning flight. But ultimately when you land, you know, if the grass is dry then, put the glider away. If you're new, don't do that because by the time the dew dries, the thermals are kicking up. You know, you've missed your window for safer opportunities for landing. But that's how you paramotor. Just had an idea for a video. I hope it turns out good. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and thumbing up the video. I think that's the same thing, right? If you like it, you thumb it up. I'm half retarded in the mornings, so I apologize for that. I tend to sharpen up as the day goes on. Please forgive my ignorance of, uh, you know, YouTube vocabulary. But I hope you enjoyed the video either way. I make them because I enjoy making them. I fly because I have to. I hope you guys got something out of that. Maybe you learned something, maybe you already knew all this stuff. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. What's up everybody, Kyle out.